Hello there. What's going on, everybody? I hope you are all staying home, staying safe, and doing your best to make the most of this fun little quarantine time. And it, because of that, I have decided to kind of push something out a little bit earlier than I was going to push out. And this is a Legion AI system. Uh, so I am uh, basically bringing to you like an early version one version of my Legion AI deck and AI system. And so I'm gonna kind of run through it briefly here. Um, I think in a follow-up video, I'm probably going to actually like demo it and like do kind of like a like a battle report style like a solo battle report using the system uh but i'm going to talk to you guys a little bit ab about it and you can get it for free right now so uh with that said let me also remind you guys there's still just a little bit of time left to enter to win the giveaway that's actually going to be i'm going to announce the winner for that tomorrow so make sure you stay tuned click to the subscribe button you just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment on this or one of my videos it's as simple as that uh all right so Legion AI system, what is this? So, well, a uh, little history lesson. Uh, I did this a long time ago for an Armada AI deck. And basically, I was looking for an AI system that would be very random and not necessarily make you have to think too much. And the reason for this is some, you know, like I've, I've seen other AI systems that people have come out for, for games. And so I'm not like, you know, obviously this isn't like the only AI system that anybody's ever come up with. Uh, but a lot of them have to do with like, well, look at what they would really do. And at a certain point, like, like well, if I wanted to play against myself and have to think for both sides, then I would just do that and just think for both sides. And there's really nothing stopping you from being creative and trying to compartmentalize what you think each side of the table would do and then just doing that to the best of your ability. I know a lot of people who play games against themselves and that's what they do. And that's great. What I wanted was something a little different. Uh, for somebody who doesn't want to just do that already, for somebody who wants to go up against a card-driven AI system that is going to basically make up most of the rules for them. There is a little bit of thinking you'll have to put in here, uh, but like there's a couple of rules like when they move, they're going to try to move to where they're behind uh, you know, cover if possible. Uh, so you may have to make a few little minor decisions when like making moves and stuff, for example. But for the most part, the direction of the moves, the targets of the attack, and all of this stuff is already going to be um, decided for you. And it's all going to be using this card system. And uh, there's a PDF on crabock.com of all of the cards and you can print them out and they're going to do a lot of different things. So I wanted one card to be able to do everything. There are actually 10 cards uh, and you can print these out. You can sleeve them and if you print them like in a three by three, uh, so when you're going your print and you, you do, do a custom print and you choose like how many pay, how many per page, do like rows of three by three, so nine cards on one page, that's going to be about perfect size to have them sleeved in a standard sleeve. I have like I have this on uh, on a KeyForge back right now. Uh, so there's a KeyForge card in here, and I just put the regular sheet of paper in front of that, and it's about perfect size for a regular standard sleeve. It's going to work for like a Magic the Gathering card or any type of card uh, for a card game. However, maybe you're stuck home, maybe you're a printer's out of ink, maybe you don't have a printer, maybe you don't want to print things out, but you'd still like to do it. No problem. I have a separate solution, and that is there's a second PDF, also on crabock.com, uh, for a, a spread, and it's right here. Um, it's just all on one single PDF. You can either maybe just print out one sheet if you don't feel like cutting stuff out, or just have this available like on your phone or on your laptop, and maybe you roll a D10, or do a internet randomizer for you know from one through ten, just reference the number on the bottom of the card. So let's let's look at the uh, the cards themselves because uh, we've got basically different sections on the card. At the top, you've got the command phase. Uh, basically, the simple principles of the AI are the AI is never going to play command cards. Uh, and the AI is always going to pull from the pile. They're not going to deal face-up orders, right? They're always going to pull from the pile. So you're still going to have your command tokens, and you're going to still do that. But basically, the AI is treated as always pulling from the pile. But to mitigate this, one of the things the AI gets is they get a different command phase bonus. So at the beginning of each turn, you're going to shuffle the deck. You're going to be shuffling the deck a lot. Like almost every time you pull a card, you're going to then instantly reshuffle the deck. So you can get the same card three or four times in a row 
theoretically, it's like possible to do that. Pro unlikely, but possible. All right. So uh, you'll you'll pull a random card. I'm like, all right. Oh, I got this one. And then you're gonna read whatever it says for the command phase. For this particular card, it says every AI unit recovers and gains a dodge token. Each wounded AI unit recovers one health. Now, wounded does mean they have a damage token on them. This would not apply to a mini that uh, has been removed from the board. Uh, but, and this is, again, this is V1. I wanted to test this more than I have. I've done only lighter testing on this one uh, so far. And so, like, there may be a V2. Uh, but I figured this would be something fun to do if you're stuck at home and maybe you don't want to use Tabletop Simulator. There's some people that aren't you know, maybe don't have Tabletop Simulator or can't afford to buy it right now, although it's not that expensive, but some people don't like Legion on a computer. Um, but so this is just, or or maybe you're also doing that and you're looking for something else. Maybe you want to set up your terrain and your minis and you just really want to get them on the table. You can also do this system as a team-based system too, whereas you and a friend can take on an AI opponent uh, and, and, and kind of work it out that way. Uh, so that's something else. It's just an alternative way to play. Um, so like here's another card uh, and this one each every AI unit recovers and gains a surge token some of them are that one's like not too bad some of them are really nasty some of them are, are not nasty um, this next one for the command phase is all AI commanders and operatives gain two aim tokens another one is all troopers gain a aim token um, this one, here's a nasty one all AI commanders and operatives gain arsenal two and the following weapon it's a melee or range one to two weapon of three red dice so like you know and that's like you know, like that one, I'm thinking like, well, what if somebody's running Palpatine? They're not going to have his one pip. Well, you know, maybe they'll be able to uh, attack twice or attack with a bigger pool or something like that. Or, but but it's really balanced against just being itself. So that's the idea. And you never know what you're going to get. There's a, it is a little bit random. Um, so beginning of the round, you're going to, you know, assign one of those cards. You probably want to write, note what number card you, you, you've done or if you can't remember. A lot of the stuff is just giving tokens and it's all done right away. But for like that, that particular weapon card, just remember that they've got an extra three dice weapon that they can use. Okay, um, so then you are going to reshuffle the deck. Uh, and then when it's, the AI also always has priority. They're always going to be first player. Because listen, the AI is not the smartest in the world, right? A deck of cards isn't going to beat a supercomputer like somebody's brain. So we give them certain advantages. Uh, and one of those advantages is they always have priority. They're always going to go first. Uh, so uh, uh, you are going to pull a card. Or you're going to, first you're going to flip a, a token, you know. And now anytime there's a tie, uh, basically the idea is since every card is numbered, you're just going to say, like, say you pull core and you've got three core on the table. All right, so you're going to just number them briefly from left to right. One, two, and three. Okay, no problem. Well, the far left is one, the middle one's two, that one's three. And you're just going to keep flipping over cards from the top of the deck until you get a one, a two, or a three. You have an equal chance that way, and that's just the way you, you randomize. Anytime anything you need to choose something and there's no other way to choose it, that's how you can randomize. Okay? Uh, the only distinction for that is if there's an enemy that you're going for and it's a tide, like, oh, my attack priority is an enemy commander and there's two enemy commanders in range, you go for who's closest, but if they're both about the same distance, then you randomize it just with the cards. You know, so that, that's giving you, I mean, honestly, you could just flip a coin too if it's if it's an even number or something like that. But, uh, but if you've got six core, you know, if you're running like a B1 l line, well then... And then you've got uh, you've got plenty of uh, options to choose, and so then you can just pull cards until you get a one through six. You know, all right. So basically, uh, you, you set the board. You're gonna you're gonna pull a card, uh, or rather, you're going to flip a token, uh, and then you're going to do three things: the action priority, move priority, and attack priority. That are uh, you know the second, third, and fourth sections of each of these cards. So action priority is gonna, and, and these are all gonna be different on every card. Um, but so you're going to Basically, once you're activating, you know, let's say you're activating a Stormtrooper. You're going to pull a card randomly and say, oh, all right, I've got a card. Uh, this is card number two. Um, so hang on, let me scroll down to card number two. Um, so there's card number two. So you're only going to look at action priority, move priority, and attack priority here. So their action priority is for objective, aim and shoot, or aim and standby. Uh, their move priority is behind a line of sight blocker. So they're going to try and hide for moving. And then they're... Uh, uh, if they can't do that, then they'll try and go towards an objective. And their attack priority is uh, whoever has the most dice, so like basically the biggest threat. If not, uh, and if that's tied or if everybody's the same, then they'll just go for the nearest enemy. Okay, so that's basically what's going on here. So 
For, ob for action priority, there's a couple of different keywords that we have. So there's objective. Now, objective is going to mean first, if they are close enough to interact with an objective by doing an objective action, like, you know, claiming a supply or, you know, changing the moisture evaporators, they're going to do that. If they're not, they're going to move. The objective will then be a move towards an objective. Uh, so it's basically doing whatever action that is going to support them accomplishing the objective in that case. Um, if it's uh, an objective where you're just trying to get into your opponent's deployment zone, then it will become a move. If it's a straight death match, uh, then they're going to shoot, right? Because you can also use this in skirmish. Because uh, there's no reason why this wouldn't work in skirmish. So you can use this in skirmish or in a regular full battle. Um, now, aim and shoot... Uh, or aim and standby are two special ones that uh, when, basically, I, and I have this all written up on crabbox.com. But when you see aim and attack, or aim, or aim and uh, aim and shoot, or aim and standby, um, you only take the aim action if you have enough actions to do both. If you have no targets, you skip the aim, uh, and then you won't also do the other one. And if you have only one action left at that point, simply attack without the aim. Uh, for, same, for aim and standby, when you see aim and standby, you, you only take the aim action if you have two actions available. Otherwise, you just take the standby. Okay, um, So that basically, that's if you have them both because they work well together. Um, so let's see what else we have for another. Like card three, for example, the action priority is move, attack, move, and special. So you're just going to go from the top working your way down. So if the first thing, if I can move... In other words, uh, I am not maybe engaged in melee, then I will move. So basically, this one's going to be move and attack. Most of the time, you're going to do the first two actions. Uh, but if I can't attack because there's nobody in range, then I'll move down to the next one, which is going to be another move. Uh, and then if for whatever reason, I, you know, I had a fourth action available, uh, then I would do special. Now, special is going to be any kind of special action that's on the, the unit's card, working from the top down. Uh, a special action in this case is going to be like Palpatine's pulling the strings, right? Or or so, somebody arming a charge or something like that. Those are special actions. And those are all covered uh, in, in on, on crabbock.com, like how you do those. Um, and now move priority usually is telling you where specifically to move, uh, you know, uh, towards the objective, towards a friendly commander, maybe getting closer to your commander, towards an enemy commander, trying to rush the enemy commander. Um, uh, but one of the things you'll see here, like on card number three, it says spot the most enemies possible. Uh, spot basically means to move so that you can bring your guns to bear on this person. So if all of your weapons are range three, you want to move to where you get uh, as many enemies as you can get. Like for this one, is how many people can you actually shoot? So this one, spot the most enemies possible. If it says spot the enemy commander, you want to move in such a fashion that you can shoot the enemy commander. Uh, and if possible, you want to make it the best shot you can. So you want to move in such a way that they are uh, at, you know, without cover, if possible. Um, also, AIs are always moving the full length of their maximum speed. They're never taking partial moves unless, of course, that full move is going to put them into an illegal spot, like through a wall and that's the only time that they will do like a partial move as if they'll move as far as they possibly can basically all right um now attack priority uh attack priority is i think pretty self-explanatory uh for most of them you're going to pretty much you're always going to throw all of your weapons on the same target unless it tells you to split fire like uh card number three does tell you tell you to split fire two ways with your larger weapon uh against the most expensive enemy so the basically you're going to split fire two ways and if if you do have a, uh, somebody who has uh, more than two weapons then just going to group the smaller weapons together and make the biggest weapon uh, itself so that one like there is a little bit of thought you're going to have to put into this uh, but for the most part it's all controlled by the cards so it's left heavily up to the random aspects of the cards now uh, if you guys want to print this out, try it out. You know, the, you can you can definitely print it out this way. Again, three cards, three by three is the probably the best way to play it. Although you're gonna end up with an extra card uh, on a whole separate piece of paper, or you can do five by two, uh, and then again, you don't even have to cut them out if you want to just roll a die for whichever one you're going to be doing. Uh, that one also works. If you have got a D10 standing by a 10-sided die, you can just reference the number that is there that's printed. Um, Let's see. So uh, I think that's basically it. There's some extra things about setup that I want to talk about also. Um, since, uh, you know, since first off, since the AI is always going to have priority, um, 
you might think, well, aren't I going to set up with like what what objectives are we going to use? How am I going to do terrain? Well, basically, you're going to deal through. First off, you can set up the terrain normal, like make the terrain fair, like you always would. You know, if you were going to play somebody because you don't know which side of the table you're going to have, you are actually going to be rolling to see who's red and blue player as far as uh, what what si sides of the table you do. But you're going to set up all your objectives and conditions first, so like you actually determine which side of the table you're going to be playing on at the last possible moment. And the reason for that is so you don't just put all the objectives and advantageous sides for one player because you won't know which side you're going to be on. So that's there to kind of influence you to, uh, to just set it up in the fairest way possible. Um, now, you can ignore that part and just say, you know what, I think this will be a good match because like this is designed to really just be fun. This isn't designed to be some kind of tournament thing. Um, so, you know, if you want to just set up a pitched battle one way or, you know, then go for it. I do expect the AI should be fairly easy to defeat this way. And so once you've worked through the system, I would encourage you to do pitched battles of, you know, 800 points for you versus maybe 900 points for the AI. And then the next time, if you're able to beat that one, then go for a thousand points of the AI and basically keep scaling it up until the randomness and the maybe the lower, uh, you know, the rookie or the, maybe the, the, the bugged uh, computer, you know, is basically not as smart as a human opponent would be. Uh, but basically, keep keep ramping up the the point costs and uh, the difficulty until you find that sweet spot where it's actually a challenge to defeat. And uh, that would uh, you know that's kind of the goal here. And hopefully, this will give you some some fun on your tabletop. Uh, and hopefully, I've got enough of the rules and. Uh, you know, explained well enough on crabock.com. I'm going to put a link to where you can get this in the description below. Uh, and that's that's about it for right now, guys. Um, I hope you guys like it. I'd love to hear some feedback. Uh, and because this may get updated. I mean, I really didn't get to make these look the way I really wanted them to do. I wanted to put some cool, like, double crit logos on there or something like that and kind of fancy them up a little bit more. But, like, everybody's stuck at home right now. So I figured, you know what, let me just release this early as a gift to all of you. If you don't play Legion and you're looking for you know a different game to play solo, I've actually been covering a lot of those lately. Armada, I have a solo AI system, and then X-Wing, uh, I did a video battle report using the Fly Casual Simulator, so there's a way to play X-Wing solo too, although that one's with a computer. So uh, there's like, so for all the, the three games that I cover the most, there's like soloable ways that you can still play them while you're stuck at home, and I'm hoping to be able to give you guys that experience and fun things to do while stuck at home. All right, you guys. I want to thank you all so much for for watching, for for hanging out with me. Thank you guys for subscribing. Big thanks to the patrons. You guys definitely help make this all possible. If you are interested in supporting the channel, there are links for all of that in the description below, as well as the new Double Critical Podcast t-shirts. You can check those out as well. I want to thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.